Se abre la sesión. A continuación, tendrá lugar la ceremonia de entrega del Premio de Arquitectura Clásica y Restauración de Monumentos Rafael Manzano. La señora doña Melisa del Vecchio, miembro del jurado, en nombre de la Escuela de Arquitectura de la Universidad de Notre Dame, tiene la palabra para introducir el Premio de Arquitectura Clásica y Restauración de Monumentos. The authorities, members of the jury, members of the academy, the Mafre Foundation, señores and señoras, good evening. I am Melissa Del Vecchio, a member of the Manzano Prize Jury, a partner with Robert A.M. Stern Architects in New York, and an alumna of the University of Notre Dame School of Architecture. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. It is a truly great pleasure and privilege to be able to share this extraordinary occasion with all of you. The school's dean, Michael Lacutis, truly regrets that he's unable to be here and he has asked me to deliver the marks he, repaired, he prepared for this occasion. The faculty, staff, and students of the School of Architecture offer their congratulations to Richard Driehaus on his induction as an honorary member of the San Fernando Academia de Bellas Artes. It is a noble achievement and a significant recognition We would also like to thank Richard, who is a longtime friend and benefactor of the school, for his continued enthusiastic and gener generous support for the culture of humanism here in Spain and around the world. As a classical architecture school devoted to the idea of humanism, we believe in and teach the enduring values that traditional architecture and urbanism embody. We believe that traditions represent a true and all-encompassing form of sustainability, and that the philosophical assumption that the embrace of technological means and consumerism can fully address the critical issues of our time is tragically flawed. All too often, our world today values tabulation over judgment, consumption over conservation, and waste over investment. The classical focus of the school has given it a distinction within architectural education. We do not see classicism as a style, but rather a comprehensive and integrative intellectual approach that facilitates learning and forming a point of view. This approach links craft to buildings, buildings to cities, and cities to the countryside. It also allows for understanding how cultures are connected through time and geographic location while celebrating local and regional identities. It allows us to integrate the pursuit of beauty to the practical issues of how we inhabit and build on our planet to ensure a sustainable future with dignity and integrity for all culture, cultures and peoples. It has been the school's privilege to steward the Richard H. Driehaus Prize at the University of Notre Dame since its inception in 2003. The prize was established to recognize lifetime achievement in classical architecture and traditional urbanism. It has since become a forum by which the principles of the traditional city and its architecture can assume a role in mainstream discussions about the future of the architectural profession and the built environment. In 2010, Rafael Manzano Martos received the Driehaus Prize. Mr. Manzano's work expands the notion of the modern classical, its beauty, a reflection of a world that respects balance and sustainability, honoring his heritage through local forms and construction techniques while advancing the tradition through his own contributions. His work provides living examples for ways humanity can inhabit the planet and flourish in the face of challenges presented by our post-industrial society. Mr. Driehaus was so moved by Don Manzano's work that he has supported another prize here in Spain named after the laureate. 
On behalf of the faculty, students, and staff of the School of Architecture, I would like to congratulate the 2015 laureate of the Rafael Manzano Prize, Donald Gray. The school is honored to participate in the bestowing of this inspirational recognition of excellence in architecture and urbanism in Spain. Mr. Gray has made an extraordinary contribution to the idea of the inseparability of urbanism and architecture. His work embodies the Vitruvian values of beauty, utility, and durability, all of which are necessary for the cultivation and sustainability of the built and natural environments. The urbanity of his work results from individual houses linked with common walls that create spatial and processional sequences through the communities designed as villages. His work spans all scales from urbanism and architecture to construction and craft. He and his team have designed and built hundreds of houses in the traditional mode of Andalusian architecture. He began his career at a time when appreciation for traditional building was at one of the lowest points. And he has succeeded in creating new spaces that inspire and celebrate the traditions of how we live together and how we build. His story is one of heroism as he persevered, undaunted by the popular infatuation with the avant-garde and the often castigating eye of the architectural establishment. Over the past three or four decades, a growing number of practitioners and academics like Donald Gray around the world focus their attention on rediscovering the value of traditional urbanism and architecture as they reconcile the cultural gap between modernity and tradition. At first, their projects were a reaction to the arbitrariness and stylistic excesses of the postmodern movement. By now, a new rational and more intentional approach to design and criticism has emerged, set on re-establishing a firm relationship between urbanism, construction, and architectural form. It has become apparent that this is the key to the current challenge of building with sustainability and livability in mind. The work of Donald Gray is a seminal example of how this movement is addressing a true sustainability. On the one hand, with its well-scaled, locally-inspired urbanism, it facilitates pedestrian proximities that conserve energy, while on the other, with its beautiful architecture, it achieves durability and utility that make a promise of a better tomorrow to those who are lucky enough to inhabit its walls and to those of us who admire it. Before we hear from Donald Gray himself, we will watch a brief film to see a glimpse of his extraordinary work. Thank you. A continuación, el arquitecto Don León Crier leerá la laudatio del premiado. Distinguished academicians of the Academy San Fernando, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to be able to uh, talk about Donald Gray on this occasion, which brings him literally out of obscurity. I discovered Donald Gray's work 25 years ago and uh, was almost impossible to find him. It was like he was hiding. And, uh, and yet the work was, I have now shown it to the best architects in the world, uh, who recognize this as an absolute master, particularly a master of non-orthogonal urbanism, which had been abandoned for a century, from well before Ferda, who changed uh, this country into a rectangular linear uh, system of blocks, and uh, every town had its own century. And here comes a man like, no, he's not an architect. He's a writer, he's a teacher of English, and he comes from Australia and comes to this country and sees this extraordinary product, which this people and this culture and this climate and these altitudes and this soil produced and falls in love with him in such a way 
and so forcefully that he started becoming an architect. And he often worked for foreign developers uh, with, as you have seen, with foreign craftsmen <laughs> doing Spanish architecture. And here comes Richard Driehaus from Chicago, the town of the monstrous skyscraping uh, disasters, <laughs> and falls in love with this architecture which is of which Rafael Manzano uh, is so, so well known, but of which there are some heroes who are hiding and which we are discovering and honoring with this beautiful ceremony which I must say also musically brings this really to a glorious day. Because so far, uh, somebody, a master like Donald Gray, lived without glory. He's 80 years old. He has been practicing this incredible profession for 60 years in a country which has been completely going in the wrong direction. Now, I propose to you, imagine that Spanish architect had decided 50 years ago to build like that. Built then Sanchez, not like rectilinear uh, post serda grids. Have buildings three stories high instead of seven or ten and built with traditional crafts. And that the governments and the states and the industries would have not promoted the hyperscale, the global scale, but would have promoted local craft, which Donald Gray has done through his labor and his work and his education. Because it's exactly at that level of design that architects design, decide for themselves and for the society whether we are going to go beyond the human scale or whether we are going to build with the human scale and with the technology which is profoundly marked by human hand, by feelings, by a sense of harmony and by the Bayas Artes, as is written on this beautiful table. You know, the beautiful arts, and not just art, anything goes. You know. So it's very interesting, and I think that um, Don Gray is an exceptional figure, even within there is a strong movement called New Urbanism, of which we are part. And uh, uh, most of the Driehaus winners and the Manzano Prize winners are part of that movement, knowingly or not knowingly. But all these people who are really the leaders in their profession recognize here an extraordinary master, a master of non-orthogonal urbanism. So we ce celebrate the genius, not only of this uh, placemaking, but of Spain, of Europe, of the world, which was made mostly that way. And actually, um, Euclidean geometry, the pure bodies, the, the triangle, the circle, and the square, they served to do monuments, but generally towns were built in a rather loose fashion. And there's a, a famous chapter in Le Corbusier's um, uh, Précis d'Urbanisme where he says he um, contrasts Le Chemin de l'Âme, which is the donkey's path, you know, as you know, uh, and which is non-linear, meandering, up and down, you know, hardly touching the ground. And then there's le chemin de l'homme, the, the way of man, which is the straight line, the cross roads, and cuts right through the ground, ignores altitude, ignores soil, ignores civilization, ignores everything which was so far, and really submits to the law and the dictate and the soul of the machine. Yes, the machines have soul, but they are not human souls. And I think he is really within this extraordinary taking over and losing control of the human scale, a man who has built not only with local crafts, but has often recreated it, and together with uh, Rafael Manzano, they even uh, created a, a school of building crafts, which lasted for four years, and then fell victim to political machinations. But we have to think that in order to uh, do marvels like we have seen on that film, you need 39 different building crafts, and these building crafts reflect 
not only the talent of the architect, and remarkably, Donald Gray almost always lived in the first house which he built of a village or conjunto of some larger ensemble. And it is from that first house that he would direct the, the workers and the craftsmen. So it is this intimate relationship between craft, art, and technique and technology that uh, we have here this incredible witness that the world could have been much, the world of architecture could have gone that way, and there is still chance, I think, by uh, ceremonies like this and by recognition, and by really by, uh, by encouraging young people to follow that uh, model, because he's a, uh, Donald Gray is a true model, uh, particularly for young architects. Because I think he lives in the best sense what Kant, Immanuel Kant, said uh, of morality, that we should act in such a way that the principle of our action could become the principle of general behavior. And so I think applied to architecture is like you know, the principles which animate Donald Gray's work are the principles which animate world architecture yet create all these extraordinarily different languages of building which are defined by different continent climates and so on. And it is because this architecture was only preserved by heroic individuals, often hiding. He has, he has genius, but he has no genius. Donald Gray has no genius of publicity. That's really, every genius has something missing. And here, it's publicity genius. So it's coming now, Donald. Because I think the work is really an example to put uh, how uh, the longing of many, many people in all countries for traditional architecture. And it's not just tourism which demonstrates it, but it's particularly the bad traditional architecture which is built around the countries. I live in Mallorca. Most buildings in the country are bad traditional architecture. And because why? It's not because they are bad architects, but because there's no teaching of this architecture. There's no teaching, there's no craft teaching. And so necessarily when we end up with caricatures of traditional architecture, and the first, actually, the first beautiful ensemble of Donald Gray is heavily marked by this kitsch because people took it over and have think, they think they have improved the detail by adding little shades and, you know, the things they buy in Le Roi Merlin and, um, and such shops. So I think this is a real example. And I wish uh, to end with, um, it's very famous here, but the... Uh, the visitors don't know this uh, saying of Eugenio Dochs that todo lo que no es tradición es plagio. Everything which is not tradition is plagiarized. Well, thank you very much. El excelentísimo señor don Richard Driehaus hace entrega del premio al señor Gray.
El arquitecto Don Donald Gray tiene la palabra a continuación. Quiero dar gracias, si me permite la voz. Quiero dar gracias a todas aquellas personas e instituciones que han, que han hecho posible este, uh, este premio. Quiero dar gracias a don Rafael Manzano. Gracias. Quiero dar gracias también a don Miguel Licuris, que desgraciadamente no está aquí. Y a a don León Criel. Muchas gracias. Y también quiero dar gracias muy especiales, gracias a don Ricardo Drijas. Muchas gracias. Y también quiero dar gracias a la Real Academia de Bellas Artes, Luis San Fernando. Y muchas gracias. Thank you very much. El excelentísimo señor don Richard Driehaus tiene la palabra. Just like to take a few minutes and let you know about the annual summer student seminar that is associated with the Manzano Prize. This program has been held the last two summers here in Madrid. It is managed under the dedicated and nurturing leadership of Alejandro Garcia Hermida. The program provides students from across the globe a primer on traditional architecture and urban planning. It then sends them into the city for an intensive hands-on studio experience to apply what they learned to a real-life design challenge location. The design results have been remarkable. The feedback from the students has been resoundingly positive. So today, In anticipation of next year's fifth anniversary of the Manzano Prize, I want to announce an additional 20,000 euros to support the 2016 Summer Student Seminar. This is intended to provide partial financial support for two students who would not otherwise be able to attend. It is also to extend the seminar for several days so the students have more time to fully develop their designs. My sincerest thanks to Alejandro, the visiting professors, and the jury members who participate in this remarkable program. Educating the next generation in the principles of historic preservation and urban design that embrace historic content is among the most urgent but under-resourced concerns on the social agenda. I look forward to continue this important dialogue, and I want to thank you all, and thank you, Donald Gray. And, I mean, Leon Career couldn't have said it best. I just want to uh, mention something about my career. I was a C student, couldn't get a job, finally did, and I just worked real hard. And all the academics couldn't understand what I was doing. I was learning through my eyes and observation and responding to what was going on. So I'm a man of K pasa. Implemented. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Donald. Thank you, Leon. Thank you, everybody.
Para finalizar el acto, la organista doña Carmen Serrano interpretará el preludio 552 de Bach. Se levanta la sesión.